Hey guys, welcome back. Just this past week, we took the final walk around our property and we completed the last remaining jobs that we wanted to get done prior to the upcoming hunting season. And now we are giving the property back to the deer, letting it rest for just about a month prior to hunting it for the first time. Hopefully you guys have been able to get all the work that you wanted to get done, completed, or you're getting close to, so you can let your property rest as well. Giving your property time to settle down prior to the upcoming season plays such a critical role in creating predictable deer movement. But now we're gonna be shifting focus from the habitat work, from getting our property ready for the season to the season itself. And so in this video, I wanted to take some time to talk about some tips for early season hunting. And before we really get into the tips that I'm gonna share with you in this video, just know that just because I do something a certain way, that does not mean that it's the only way. There are plenty of ways to get the job done. I tend to be a little bit more conservative with my hunting approach, but there are plenty of people out there that are more aggressive with their tactics and they have success on a fairly consistent basis. So again, just because my hunting strategy tends to be a little bit more conservative, that doesn't necessarily mean it's the best way or the only way. It's just the way that works and makes sense for us. So knowing that we are a little bit more conservative with our hunting approach, the first tip that I have for you guys when it comes to early season hunting is to stay patient. And guys, this one can be pretty difficult. You just spent the last nine months of the year getting your property ready for this hunting season. You've had your cameras out all summer. You have pictures of nice velvet bucks. Social media during the early season is not your friend. You're gonna be seeing kind of the outlier pictures of, of guys dropping big bucks in the early season. And all of these factors mixed together make a perfect storm to really try to tempt you into pushing into your property too soon. One of the worst things that you can do in the early season is push too far into your property and educate the deer on your property. You know, sitting as a stand that's meant for the rut in early October. Hopefully you were able to let your property rest just prior to the hunting season, giving the deer that use your property a false sense of security. This is gonna create more predictable movement patterns. However, if you start pushing into the best locations on your property, the thickest, densest cover, that the first chance that you get or opening weekend, you're gonna be educating deer by exposing them to hunting pressure, which is gonna lower your chances for those higher percentage time periods like the rut and the pre-rut. And I do wanna make it clear that I'm not saying do not hunt in the early season. You spent too much time getting your property ready, preparing for the season that it is okay to hunt in the early season. Just try your best to resist the temptation to push too far into those premier stand locations, into your favorite spots early on, risking ruining a hunt down the road. The next tip that I wanna talk about as it relates to early season hunting is to limit your morning hunts. Most of the time with morning hunts, you wanna be focusing on bedding areas, thick, high stem count, secure bedding cover. And the reason you wanna be doing this is because when you walk into those locations, the deer in the morning are typically not there. They're going to be off in the food plots or the destination food source location, whatever that might be in your area. And you're gonna be sneaking into those bedding areas as those deer are feeding, and you're gonna be capturing the movement as they head back to bed. However, early on in the hunting season, a lot of the bucks that we're targeting are leaving the food sources and heading back to the bedding areas well before daylight. So if they are heading back to the bedding area at the same time that you are walking to that bedding area, there is a high probability that you're either going to spook him on the way or he's already going to be there when you get to your stand. Again, risking the chance of bumping that deer, educating him, and then pushing him off to your neighbors. In high pressure states like Michigan, those older bucks, they don't really do a whole lot of moving around during daylight. They like to be back to their bedding areas well before the sun comes up, and they don't really leave their bedding areas until just before the sun goes down. And guys, a lot of the movement studies that they've done with collared bucks has shown this same pattern. In the early season, the bucks do move a lot, but most of that movement is done at night. Before daylight, they shift back to those bedding areas and they don't really move from those bedding areas in, until dark. And that pattern kind of stays the same until about mid to late October. So again, if you're pushing into those bedding areas in the morning or, or even in the afternoon, there's a good chance that that deer is already gonna be there and you have a really good chance of spooking them. And if you guys wanted to maybe see if your property is an outlier, maybe the patterns of the bucks on your property are a little bit different, 
all you really need to do is compare historical trail camera pictures. And that's something that we do every single year. We compile pictures and we compare them from year to year. And what we found in our properties is the bucks have very similar patterns to the bucks in these movement studies. Uh, for the most part, they're in the bedding areas for majority of the day. They do most of their uh, moving at night. And then right before sunup, they're heading back to the known bedding location. So again, if we were to push into those areas, we would have a high probability of spooking the deer that we're trying to target. And I actually spooked one of the deer that we were trying to target last year by hunting a morning. We hadn't hunted a morning until about the 24th of October. A cold front moved through, and we thought that was a perfect time to kind of push in a little bit closer to one of the bedding areas. But on my way to the stand, and I didn't know it at the time, but I actually bumped one of the deer that we were trying to target. It wasn't until the following day when I, when I checked one of the trail cameras that I saw that he was actually standing underneath the tree that I was gonna be hunting about three minutes prior to me walking up to the stand. And you can see him kind of look back at me walking in and he kind of just trots off. So unfortunately he was on his way back to bed when I was walking to the stand about an hour before daylight. And I most likely ruined any chance that I had of having an opportunity at that particular deer by bumping him on the way to my stand in the morning. So one thing that you can really do to kind of help your chances later on in the season is by limiting your hunts in the early season. So we just talked about two things that you should be trying to avoid, right? Try to avoid pushing too far into your property too soon, and also try to limit your morning hunts early in the season. But again, you do wanna be hunting your property in the early season. You, you put so much work into it, you don't just wanna sit back and, and not hunt. So when should you be hunting? And well, by process of elimination, if you're not hunting in the morning, you should be placing an emphasis on afternoon hunts or night hunts. The most predictable pattern early on in the season is a deer's bedding to feeding pattern. During the day, they're gonna be hanging out in that thick, high stem count, secure bedding cover, and they're going to transition and move to a destination food source, possibly hitting food sources along the way. And this is where you wanna capitalize if you're gonna be hunting during the afternoon. You wanna capitalize on that movement in between the bedding and the feeding movement. Now there are a few things you wanna watch out for when you are trying to capitalize on this bed to feed pattern. The first is that you do not want to be pushing too far into those bedding areas. Remember those deer are gonna be in there and the closer you get, the higher the chances you have of spooking them out. So when I'm hunting that bed to feed pattern in the afternoon, I really like to hunt some sort of a pinch point that's shaded towards the food plot side. So, so not really on the bedding area side, more towards the food plot side. So I'm away from that bedding area and I can let those deer come to me as they pinch down near that man-made or natural pinch point and then they head off to the food source, whether that's a food plot or my neighbor's ag field, whatever it might be. I have a lower probability of spooking the deer if I'm not getting too close to those bedding locations. However, the next thing you wanna watch out for when you are hunting that bed to feed pattern in the afternoon is that you're not spooking deer on the way out of your stand. So one thing you wanna to try to avoid is hunting on a destination food source location. This is where having smaller plots or, or, or a food plot trail, pass through plots, kill plots, whatever you wanna call them, that's where these types of plots can be really beneficial for hunting in the afternoon. As the deer leave the bedding locations, they might come and hit a couple apple trees, hit a couple oak trees, hit your small food plot, move down your food plot trail on their way to the destination food source, right? So you're not sitting on or hunting on the main course, you're hunting over the appetizer. So these deer are gonna grab a quick bite before they head off to that larger food source. Avoiding hunting the destination food source and placing a priority on the pass-through plot or the micro plot has a few benefits. The first is these smaller plots are a lot of times in cover, which means the deer are gonna feel a lot more comfortable, meaning they're gonna get there a lot earlier in the evening. So that's gonna give you a lot more shot opportunities. The second is that they don't want to end there. They wanna end in that destination food source. So they're gonna keep moving, which means that they're gonna be on their way when you have to get down from your stand. So most of the time, if there's deer in front of you when, when it gets dark, you don't have to wait that long before they clear out of that food plot and you can slip out of your tree. However, if you're hunting a destination food source, you know, depending on how the tree is set up or how your blind is set up, you could have deer in front of you all night long. And it's gonna be very difficult for you to slip out of that area 
without those deer knowing that you were there. And once you start spooking deer, either on the way to your stand or from your stand, what you're gonna start noticing is those deer are gonna start staying in those bedding areas a lot longer, getting to the food sources later, giving you a lot fewer opportunities. So when you do hunt the afternoon bed to feed pattern, try to shade your stand location towards the food source side so you're not pushing too close to that bedding area. And also try to avoid sitting on the destination food source. Again, that way you can get out of your stand without spooking the deer on that food source. The next tip that I want to talk about for early season hunting is when should you actually be going out to your stand? And this is actually no different than any other time of the year. It's post cold front, when the temperature is dropping and the barometric pressure is rising. Just like with the collared buck movement studies that we talked about earlier, there have been plenty of studies as it relates to deer movement and cold fronts. And the data from these studies is pretty clear. And if you wanna combine that with all the anecdotal evidence from hunters around the country, it's no secret that deer move a lot more post cold front. When the temperature drops, the deer, including older bucks, have a greater chance of being on their feet. So knowing this as a hunter, if you have the opportunity to, you should be lining your hunts up to cold fronts. Now I know not everyone has the opportunity to just take off work and, and hunt whenever they want, but if you have the opportunity to, you should be trying your best to time your hunts to cold fronts. Everything that we're trying to do is to try to increase our chances at success. Each time that you push into your property, you're going to be leaving a trace behind. Even if you practice great scent control, you're, you're downwind of everything, you're going to be leaving a trace behind and there's a chance that eventually the deer on your property are gonna realize that you were there and lower your chances at having success in the future. So just like you pick high odd stand locations based on the time of year and the time of day, you also wanna pick high odds days based on the weather. And statistically speaking, the days that you have the best chance of seeing a lot of deer movement are following a cold front when the temperature is dropping and the barometric pressure is at its highest. And guys, I know there's talk out there that barometric pressure does not influence deer movement, whether it's low, whether it's high. But in, in my experience, I have seen that when the barometric pressure is high, there is more deer movement. So I am a believer that the barometric pressure does have an impact on deer movement. I actually would love to hear what you guys have to say and if you guys have any idea why that might be. I have no idea why. I just know that when the temperature drops and the barometric pressure goes up, the deer movement increases. And guys, I do know that hunting only post cold front is not realistic for a majority of hunters. Most of us have a job that we have to go to Monday through Friday, nine to five. And so if that cold front hits during the middle of the week, we just can't pick up and go out to, the, to our stand. So what do we do in those situations where it's the weekend and the weather isn't great for hunting, but we still wanna be hunting during the early season? Well, that brings us to our last tip that I want to talk about for early season hunting. And it's actually something that we do a lot in the early season, and that's observational sits. An observational sit is exactly what it sounds like. You are just gonna be observing deer movement. You're most likely not gonna be close enough to be in the action or have an opportunity at the deer that you're targeting, but hopefully you have windows into that deer movement that you can use to help pattern deer for future hunts. Now that doesn't mean that you're not taking your bow with you, you absolutely are, you're in the woods, anything can happen. And some of these observational sit stands can still be decent stand locations. For example, some of the stands that we really like to sit in for observational sits are, are right off a road where maybe we can see our food plots off in a distance so we can kind of pattern deer where they're coming in and out of those food plots. But we also have maybe a decent trail that could be crossing the road. We might be able to capitalize on a random movement while also trying to observe and pattern deer for a future hunt. And this is actually one of the locations that I use on our property as an observational stand early on in the hunting season. Directly behind the camera is our pole barn and about five yards away to my left here is a big bur oak, which is loaded with acorns this year, and I have a ladder stand in it. And this particular stand location allows me to do a few different things. The first is I can observe movement to and from this food plot, and I can kind of see a little bit around the corner from the stand, and I can kind of see which trails are the deer taking into the food plot, which trails are they using to leave the food plot to head to my neighbor's hay field, which is on the other side of the property line. And the other thing that this stand allows me to do is potentially capture the movement as these deer move from the bedding areas to the food plots to these bur oak acorns when they start dropping in the early season before again they head out to my neighbor's hayfield. 
So if the buck that I'm trying to capture, which is highly unlikely, but it's possible if he wants to come out here and have a couple acorns before hitting that hay field, I have an opportunity here five yards away from my pole barn without ever having to push too far in to my property. So those are the types of stand locations, again, observational stands that I'd be trying to focus on if the, the days that I had the opportunity to hunt lined up with, let's say, a poor weather day. I wouldn't be trying to push too far into my property and, and again, burn out higher odd stands on, on a lower percentage day. But guys, that wraps up the early season hunting tips that we're gonna be talking about in this video. If you guys have any additional tips or if you guys have any questions, please drop those in the comment section below. I'll get back to those as soon as I can, and we will see you guys in the next video.